Great. Well, welcome to today's panel discussion on mobile application strategy. My name is Peter Kakanis. I'm a technical marketing manager here responsible for mobile, web, and synthetics. And we have quite the distinguished panel to address this topic. And I would like to ask uh, each of them to introduce themselves. Kalyan, why don't you kick it off? Thank you, Peter. Yeah, my name is Kalyan Ramanathan. I'm the Vice President of Product Marketing here at AppDynamics, and I manage uh, the entire suite of application performance management products here, including the mobile product. Uh, I'm a mobile maven. I uh, have followed this market for very many years, uh, pick up on every trend in this market. Uh, I love mobile apps, and uh, this is a great space. I'm very excited to be here to be discussing these topics uh, with this distinguished panel. Thank you. So uh, my name is John Rakowski. Uh, I'm a director of product marketing at App Dynamics. I'm based over in the UK. Um, and so actually, before I came to uh, App Dynamics, I was an analyst at Forest Research for four years. And so I was focusing on uh, performance and availability, so looking at application performance management, uh, looking at kind of monitoring. And obviously, in the last couple of years, um, you know, I've been also been focusing on mobile application performance management also. Uh, before that, I was uh, an architect, and before that, a consultant working with various kind of monitoring technologies. Thanks. Uh, my name's Jonah Cowell. I'm the VP of Market Development and Insights here at AppDynamics. Uh, like John, I came from the analyst world, uh, formerly a research vice president at, at Gartner, focusing on availability and performance. Spent a lot of time in APM because of the level of interest and the technology growth in that space. Um, prior to that, I came from an end user background. And I've implemented a lot of APM products and, and still enjoy doing that uh, on my spare time. Pleased to be here with everyone and having the discussion. Well, I don't think we could ask for a more distinguished and knowledgeable panel to address this topic. The you know, first area that I'd, I'd really like to dig into is this question of what's involved in really building a five-star mobile app strategy. And to kick things off, there's a lot of you know, buzz and people talking in the industry today about, well, you've got to be mobile first. And you know, what I'd like to kick out to you guys is, what does that really mean, you know, in your experience to be mobile first? And how does it relate to the brand strategy and the overall software strategy of the enterprise? Well, I'll start. Um, so effectively, you know, in uh, today's world, you know, we can call it the digital world, we can call it the software powered world. Essentially, mobile is extremely important. Mobile changes the way you engage with your customers you engage with your employees to kind of help them kind of stay uh, productive and remain productive. It's also essential, mobile is an essential element in delivering the right experience to your customers. You know, technology is becoming more intimate and mobile is kind of driving that. You know, I, even in my kind of uh, home life, I sleep with my smartphone by the side of my bed. The first thing I do in the morning, you know, I roll over, and I check my mobile phone, my smartphone, see what's gone on overnight. But let me kind of take that one step kind of back as well. It's important not to lose sight of the end user, of the customer, of the employee. It's not just mobile for mobile's sake. Mm -hmm. Mobile is all about enhancing experience, solidifying kind of engagement and the kind of relationship. So the first thing which you need to kind of look at is to take this emphasis of being customer first, understanding your customer's pain points before kind of diving into your kind of mobile strategy. Yeah, and the, the most important thing for your brand is to be engaged with your users. The more touch points that you can have with your user and the more that you can associate the intimacy that they have with their phone with your brand on their phone, that is what creates that solidified customer experience that's going to keep them coming back, keep them satisfied, recommending you to friends, giving you those ratings in the public view that's going to then encourage other users to come on board and, and have the same experiences. Yeah. Now, Kalyan, I think you were telling me earlier about uh, uh, an actual use case that you just went, recently went through that illustrates these points. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, to me, mobile is all about identifying a user need 
uh, understanding the user's context, and then looking at the environment around the user so that uh, you can meet that need in the, in the most optimal possible way. So I had to recently deposit a check. Uh, in the past, I would have taken this check to an ATM or to a bank teller, and I would have deposited the check. Uh, but uh, the world has changed now. I picked out my smartphone, an iPhone or an Android device. I, you know, take the picture of the check, the front and the back of the check, and I'm done with uh, depositing, that, depositing that check. So what, what happened here was that the, the banking application, uh, you know, clearly understood the user need. Uh, here is a user who needs to deposit a check, and they had a great widget, a great solution to deposit that check. The second thing that, they, that the bank did very well, and this app did very well, is to understand the context. Uh, I could, you know, press my fingerprint, and I got authenticated to the to the bank and the banking app. Um, they knew right away that I deposited my checks to my savings account instead of my checking account. So the user context was baked into this process itself. And then finally, uh, the 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 app and the device knew the environment uh, around the user, which which made this process all the more better. Uh, I could authenticate into the banking application quickly. The camera took the pictures, and. Uh, and you know, it also imprinted my location so that there is an added security capability that is built into this check deposit process. So it's the combination of you know, the user need, understanding the user need, uh, you know, putting the right context uh, in place, and then also you know, using the environment and the sensors around the mobile app and the device that, that made this such a wow experience for me. Yeah. Just to kind of add to that, if you take that, you know, what Kalyan's talking about, the kind of uh, the idea of context, and context is really important to a great kind of mobile app. But what you need to also understand um, is that mobile changes, as we said before, this kind of engagement kind of journey. So it changes the customer journey with your organization. And there's different ways of looking at this. And kind of one of the best ways I kind of look at this is to look at what's called the customer life cycle. Mm -hmm. So there's various stages of a um, uh, you know, a journey which a customer will go, f go on when engaging with your organization. And mobile actually changes each one of those stages. So let me give you kind of a, an example here. We talk about the customer life cycle, there's different stages. So immediately, you know, your customer needs to have a need, a want. So they'll have a need, a, a want. They'll then look to discover your organization. Mobile changes that discovery process. It's not just about walk it, walking into a store now. They're going to go to a mobile app store. Uh, they're going to download your mobile application, so whether that's uh, Google Play, uh, you know, whether that's um, you know, on, on the Apple kind of app store. They're then going to uh, use your application, so they're going to go through a discovery process. And at that stage, you know, performance is kind of key. They need to be able to download it. Usability is also key. Hopefully then, they're going to choose your application. If you don't have performance there, they're not going to even choose your application. Then they're going to use that application even, you know, co continued use. And then, they're going to kind of engage more. Hopefully, they're going to leave kind of that positive five-star review of your application. And then, they're going to kind of help you maintain the reputation of that application, to kind of promote the application to maybe friends, maybe family, maybe their colleagues, maybe within the enterprise as well. It's not just the external model. Within the enterprise, you want your employees to be promoting great mobile apps, because then it's all about productivity. So, just to summarize, it is about understanding that customer kind of journey, that user journey, and making sure that your mobile app is enhancing every single stage there. Yeah, I mean, that, that reminds me that, uh, again, sort of har harping back also to our first point, is that just because people are thinking mobile first, mobile is not in and of itself a separate entity. It really has to be integrated into your overall enterprise strategy. And at some level, the mobile application becomes you know, the first very intimate contact point of all of your stakeholders, whether they're, you know, customers or other businesses, uh, you know, in your enterprise. And so the mobile application almost becomes, you know, a, a representative of your brand at some level. And actually, when you look globally at what we call mobile first, it's different in every region. So in certain parts of Asia, mobile first is actually a lot more prominent than it is even in the US. So there are cultural differences between users where mobile first matters in a different way. So it's important to understand your audience and where they are and how they engage with technology to better suit how you should make them sticky for your brand, sticky for your app. And, 
you know, I, I'd add to that. I mean, there are certain verticals where mobile first has almost become the, the only way to do business, right? I mean, if you are in gaming, if you are in social, if you are in media today, that's, mobile happens to be your consumption platform today. Um, you know, I'd say some of the other verticals, like let's say e-commerce and uh, financial services, banking for that matter, or travel, uh, mobile is um, you know yet another channel, not very different from the uh, from the web channel. Uh, mobile obviously is getting a lot more traction there, but mobile is used as much as perhaps the web channel in in some of these other verticals. But today, if you are in the social world. Uh, there is my wife, uh, mobile is everything for her. I mean, she gets up in the morning, not yeah, like yeah, you, John. Yeah, yeah. She picks up a tablet and she is Facebooking away to glory. I mean, so that's, that's the only way of engagement that she knows uh, with, a, with a mobile channel yeah. today. And just to kind of take that back to the kind of enterprise level then, um, what's important here is a term which uh, kind of was introduced to a couple of years ago. Everyone talks about, you know, you need to collaborate with your kind of users, make sure you understand those consumers, those customers. Actually, for mobile, it's taking it one step further. There's this notion of co-creation. Mm -hmm. So co-creation is actually getting your, you know, your most, um, you know, loyal customers, the ones who you kind of really value, to be involved in the kind of uh, the strategy of developing kind of mobile apps. So get them involved in the early concept stages, the desi design stages. Listen to them. Understand their pain points. Understand those friction points because ultimately, mobile has to kind of solve that. It has to solve those kind of pain points. It has to enhance experience. And that's what's key. So again, going back to that notion which we talked about right at the start, yep, it's about mobile first, but get your customers involved. Because the only way you're gonna have a successful mobile app is to engage with those customers and to de delight them. Ultimately, it's about delight. Yeah, you know, that, that reminds me just quickly of a, of a project I was involved in when I was at Sony Ericsson, where we, we worked with a bunch of big brands where they could make uh, content that was related to their brand available to their users so that people could you know, personalize and customize their devices with brand content from the brands that they you know, had a level of identification with. And um, you know, I was amazed at the data that came out of that in terms of how avidly people really identify with their brands and want to make that brand you know, a part of their everyday life and a part of their mobile experience, which is you know, one of the things that's central to, increasingly central, as, as you've all pointed out, uh, you know, to, to their you know, whole activity throughout the day. Right. And I think, uh, Peter, I agree with you a lot. I mean, you know, this, this notion of iteration uh, and you know, building a mobile app, right? I mean, not only happens in the design stage, it happens in the, in the, in the development stage, it happens in the release stage, and it, it's pretty amazing how mobile uh, has sort of transformed the way software is built and released and you know, put out to the, you know, put out to the production environment and to consumers like, like you and I here. My, my next question for you guys is really, could you talk a little bit about you know, the design and planning of how to create these five-star you know, mobile experiences? Specifically, for example, you know, how do you identify those, those mobile opportunities? So I'll, you know, I'll start with that. Um, Essentially, it goes back to the notion of understanding your customer, your end user. So you've got to get them involved in the early concept stages. Also as well, you know, it's about a, a technique which is a simple technique to use. It's about actually uh, pulling out the customer journey. So diagramming that customer journey. So actually saying, okay, well, what stages does a customer go through when they're engaging with our organization? And then start to understand how long does each stage take? Because ultimately, mobile is about enhancing that experience, enhancing the kind of speed of interaction. And so you want to identify great kind of mobile opportunities there. You know, for me, from a performance management perspective, those are kind of moments of truth for me. You've got to be ensuring that you're kind of um, performance managing or monitoring those kind of areas kind of well. But taking that back to the top level, it's about drawing out that customer journey, identifying those kind of areas which mobile or mobile app kind of, you know, makes sense to enhance that experience. Yeah, the, uh, the other thing that you have to always keep in mind with mobile is that the amount of attention and the engagement that you have of the user is very different. People use their phones for very short amounts of time regularly and you want them to keep coming back to your app and using it. And it's not about sitting down and you know, 
using your computer for 30 minutes. It's about 30 seconds, 90 seconds, two minutes if you're lucky, but repeatedly over the day. And that gives you the ability to re-impress your brand and your product and what you do through that app on the device. But you also don't want to annoy the user. Yeah, right. And performance is one thing that can definitely annoy users. Having things not work, integrations that fail, it's important to have the right level of testing, have the right level of understanding of availability of third-party services and integration points, and understanding, of course, the end user experience as they interact yeah. with that app and as they interact with your brand. And, you, know, uh, you know, when I've talked to some of my mobile customers in the past, you know, I, I, I've often referred to them uh, you know, in the, about a POST framework. Yep. and POST framework, and I think it comes from one of you guys, uh, Forrester or Gartner, and, and fundamentally, right, uh, it's about understanding your persona. Yep. You know, who are you selling to? Who is the user of this app? Is it a housewife? Is it a consumer? Is it an enterprise employee? Uh, it's about understanding the, uh, the, the objective of this mobile app. You know, what are you trying to do with this mobile app? Are, are you getting them to interact, engage, just read, or perhaps read and update at the same time? Uh, what's the strategy around this mobile app? Is this a, uh, you know, something that's, going to be available for a short period of time? Is this something that you plan to build over many years and you know, you got many cycles to iterate upon this? And then the lastly, and perhaps uh, you know, the least important, but, but yet it becomes important in the grand scheme of things, it, it's around technology. What choices are you going to make out here? Are you going to go with native? Are you going to go with hybrid or you know, HTML5 and you know, all those other technology choices? But, but technology has to be the last element of this, of this puzzle. Uh, you have to understand your persona, you've got to understand your objective and your strategy first. Exactly. You've got to take you know, what we would term an outside-in view rather than an inside-out. There's a tendency, you know, especially within the technology world, we like technology. We're all kind of engineers and we get excited about technology. But the reality is, you've got to start off with that persona mm -hmm. and that customer. And ultimately, with any mobile app, it's about satisfying need at speed. And you have to remember, too, that users are going to engage on multiple platforms, multiple channels. So they're going to be using your product, your whatever it happens to be, on their computers, on their mobile devices, on their tablets. And it's important for you to understand which of those personas make the most sense for certain things that you're trying to you know, do with your business. So if you have a complicated, heavy enterprise web app, you may want a very lightweight app for the mobile, you know, the, the, the mobile phone and possibly something in between that may give more of an experience on a tablet where you have that real estate the user's typically a little bit more engaged than they are on their phone where they're running between meetings or trying to catch a flight or whatever it happens to be. So it's really about that bigger picture view versus saying, this is our mobile, this is our enterprise web app. It's, you know, it's really understanding all of the engagement and touch points there. Yeah, so it's really, if I can try and summarize, it's about understanding what that mobile moment is, yeah, mm -hmm. what is the user trying to accomplish, you know, in that time frame because you've got that very limited amount of engagement where you can really and then delivering against the performance of that or right. the, the, the the performance delivers against that mobile moment yeah. but it, it's really all of the channels together and understanding the user and how they engage with you it's not just mobile it's not just web it's not just the enterprise app it's all of that together and having consistency and having experience where the user doesn't see something completely different on one device versus another. You need that consistency. And it goes back to the fact that whether you're talking about a web app, whether you're talking about a mobile app, all of this reflects your business, your brand. And so that's kind of what's critically important here. And again, I want to go back to this really important aspect of kind of speed, because when it comes to mobile, if your customer takes out their smartphone from their pocket, taps the mobile application, and that's not going to perform, you know, it's not performing well, it's slow, you're not going to have another chance. Mm -hmm. Look at the app markets. They're full of different applications, all trying to satisfy and grab the attention of your customers. So it has to be done at speed, and so you only have one chance at this. You know, we've identified these, these mobile moments that we have to deliver against, and that raises the next question, which is, when we're trying to ensure the quality of the mobile application experience, 
what are the key things that we have to consider? What are the complexities of delivering against that? What is important to monitor? What do we need to measure in order to make sure that when we have that opportunity to engage with the customer, that we're delivering against a quality experience for them? So it, it's not all that different than the traditional web application, enterprise application. You have to ensure that when the user wants to use the app, that it will work. So you need some level of proactive testing of the application and the third party components the application relies on. But more importantly, you have to understand the actual end user, the actual data of their interaction with the application. So it's, it's you know, the things that they're touching and using in the application, the latency, the measurement, the metrics coming from the network side and the device side. And it's really, you know, having that availability and performance view of the application and associated services. And it is, it is very complicated because of all the different components that mobile apps touch. Yeah. They, they use a lot of cloud services, a lot of third parties, and that makes them particularly difficult to assure. Yeah, so. Jonas, since I come from the mobile world, uh, you know, I have some metrics to go along with some of the things that you just mentioned. Uh, you know, on average, a mobile app uh, will interface to you know six to ten uh, APIs or cloud services. You know, they could be internal services like your CRM API or your Salesforce API. It could be third-party services like, uh, for example, a, a Facebook uh, social API or a Google Mail API or a PayPal uh, payment API, right? And so, and these mobile apps typically interfaces uh, interface to these APIs uh, through a wide variety of networks, right? Could be Wi-Fi, 3G, 4G, you name. It. And you know, depending on the geo where you live in, these networks work in different ways. They have different latencies. They have, uh, you know, they have, they have they have different types of coverages and services. Uh, and then finally, when you think about the client end, right, where your mobile app actually runs, uh, you got your OS complexity. Uh, in the in the Apple world, we you know we think that there is uh, you know there's pretty much iOS 8 and nothing else. Uh, but if you look at even the distribution of OS, I mean, there are a fair number of iOS 7 users today. Uh, and then let's not forget the device complexity. Uh, you know, there are about 500 devices in the Android world today. It's a very fragmented world with lots of devices, lots of RAM, lots of form factors. So when you sort of add it all up, there are about a million, you know, permutations and a million factors that a that a mobile app vendor needs to think about if they have to ensure you know high quality and high performance of their mobile app itself. It definitely is very very complex. Not just the OS, but you know the customer, your user's got the choice. You may have the you know your latest mobile app kind of version, but they may choose to use an earlier version. Mm -hmm. There's no kind of pressure on them to really upgrade. If they're getting great experience from an earlier kind of version, they're going to keep on that version. And so you know mobile is from a performance management point of view, uh, definitely complex. And this is why you know from kind of my research in the past. A good mobile APM product is just absolutely essential. You need to be able to track those transactions as they go across these tiers, understand and pinpoint these uh, performance problems. And ultimately, the other bit of complexity here is that just because you've got a mobile app, you, know, you may assume that your customer is going to just use this kind of mobile app all the time. That may not be true. They may go onto the mobile app for certain kind of features, certain elements, certain information which they want, but they may also go back to your web app. And so, um, I know we talked about this earlier, Jonah, it's exactly what you were saying. Yeah. It's about understanding all of these channels. You can't just get obsessed with mobile. It's understanding mobile in relation to the other channels, mo uh, web app. But there's also a lot of organizational issues because sometimes mobile is developed on a different team than the other applications. So there's still a lot of things happening organizationally to bring these mobile teams together with operations and development of the other platforms, whether it's a traditional enterprise app or a web app. And you know that will happen over time, but strategically the company has to eventually start thinking about these things together and not this is our mobile experience and our mobile user and this is our web app and our web user. Yeah, and then, it's, I mean, it's about the single user, right. not about the delivery yeah. channel. You brought up a great issue of organization. Uh, you know, the other uh, interesting um, uh, 
trend that we see in, in, in the mobile world is the fast time to market and the iteration that goes in the mobile world. That right? helps. Right, exactly. So, you know, the fact that, you know, you have to push out an app, uh, you know, every two weeks, like Facebook, right? Essentially, it means that you have no time beyond developing that app to actually, quali to actually test that app, to ensure quality in the app. So, more often than not, what tends to happen is people develop apps, they do some basic testing, functional testing, you know, uh, some basic performance testing, and then they throw it over the wall, and then it's users who are actually ensuring quality of the app. Uh, users who are actually, uh, you know, interacting with the app and identifying issues with the app. So, the, so to, to have an agile environment where you can quickly identify these issues, you can bring it back to the, to the right folks within the development team, fix those issues, and keep cutting out new releases that address these issues that you see in the field is extremely important. And that's why mobile APM is such an important uh, you know, discipline today, and that's why you know, mobile enterprises have to adopt uh, technologies like these. So it's really, if I understand, uh, you know, it's about collaboration and making it possible for everybody who's involved in delivering the experience to the user to be able to see you know, the appropriate data, share that in a way that then they can constructively work together regardless of where the problem is, whether it's on some you know, call to a database on the back end or it's some you know, piece of you know, network infrastructure. You know, the user doesn't care, yeah. right? right? All they see is that there's a spinner and I'm impatient, I'm going to my competitor's application, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it is about that end-to-end -end, uh, kind of monitoring. So it's all the way from the end-user kind of experience mm -hmm. through to the application kind of servers, through to the kind of back-end uh, kind of databases or, you know, or the back-end, maybe even the kind of mainframe in certain circumstances. That's what becomes kind of important, uh, first and foremost. Um, and you also have to remember, if you're looking at a mobile APM product, then mobile generates a lot of data. And so, you know, things like aggregation, kind of sampling, things like the, the back-end data store. Your data store has to be economical in storing data. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of one, one tip I'll definitely kind of, uh, um, you know, give to everyone is make sure that the back-end data store of any mobile APM solution can store this data economically. <laughs> Yeah, so it seems to me like, you know, the next really key piece of it is how do you go about optimizing your mobile application strategy? And as part of that, you know, what are the key metrics that you need to track? Uh, who needs to see it? And ultimately, you know, what does that mean for the business outcome? You know, because ultimately that's what we're all interested in. How does that correlate to, you know, what you're seeing in terms of the technical performance of, of the application? Yeah. So, you know, when, when I've talked to uh, mobile execs in the past, uh, you know, when, and, and we talk about metrics, uh, they primarily divide up their metrics into three big buckets. There are technical metrics, there are engagement metrics, and there are business metrics. Uh, let me uh, talk to a few of these metrics, and I'm sure, uh, you know, John and Jonah can add to, the, to, to this conversation. So from a business metric point of view, obviously it's all about the, the strategy of the mobile app. You know, what are you trying to do? Uh, are you trying to drive... Um, you know, are you trying to drive users? Are you trying to drive uh, transactions? Uh, you know, what's the revenue that's flowing through this mobile app? Uh, you know, what's the revenue per transaction? Uh, uh, what's the abandonment rate and things of that nature? So those typically make up the, the business metrics that, that most users and, and, and most mobile app vendors are most interested in. From an engagement perspective, uh, the one that comes uh, to mind most often is uh, monthly active users. How many monthly active users do I have? Um, is it going up? Is it going down? Am I engaging with these users? What's the time, average session time for a user with my mobile app? Again, is it going up? Is it going down? Uh, how, much, how much time do these mobile app users spend on different uh, pages and uh, different views of the mobile app? Um, so that's, that's, that's where the state of the art today is. And then finally, when it comes to technical metrics, uh, you know, the usual numbers and metrics that people care about are things like crash metrics. Uh, you know, what's my crash rate? How does it compare against uh, my peers or perhaps the general market as a whole? Uh, what's my latency? How long does it take for my app to start, uh, uh, you know, do a cold start, or for that matter, uh, you know, en engage with backend services? Um, so, so those are sort of the, 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 the usual metrics that I've heard often from, from, from vendors and customers that I've engaged with. Uh, I'm sure John and Jonah have um, other things to, to add to this mix. Yeah. Um, you know, um, 
the way you summarised it though is, is, is really important because ultimately a mobile app is all about, number one, in, it's about engagement, but you have to understand how engagement relates to kind of the business, business outcomes. So if you're looking at metrics, things like you know, revenue generated from the mobile app may be important if that's what the mobile app was designed to do in the first place, if that's what the customer is using that mobile app for. Uh, it could be about just enhancing the brand. So this is where then you start going outside of these traditional metrics as well, because you need to start bringing in as well, understanding of uh, kind of the social areas as well, because as we've said before, mobile is just one kind of channel. So as well as understanding kind of metrics in relation to kind of engagement on the application, you want to understand maybe what your customers are then saying on social media channels. So are they promoting your mobile app? Because that becomes important. You know, if you've got uh, a customer who is a key influencer, so maybe, I know, Jonah, you've got, uh, is it over 10,000 uh, Twitter followers? Well, I would really want Jonah to be promoting yeah. my mobile app. That's absolutely like key. Uh -huh. That's, That's my next business plan. Is that your next? Okay. <laughs> Thanks for telling me this today, Jonah. There's an exclusive. Um, but, but, I mean, that, that's why analytics are important. So when you look at the state of the art today, a lot of it is kind of pre-canned views that help you look at, you know, somewhat of a cohort analysis and understanding where users fall into certain buckets. But honestly, there's all this unlocked data potential that's within the metrics that are collected. So let's say, for example, I want to run an event in Los Angeles and I want to look at my user engagement. Are they predominantly Android? Are they predominantly Apple? What are the age groups? What are other types of, of, of uh, data that I can use to, par to market and target these users? That's a use case for open-ended analytics where I want to slice and dice. I want to understand things in different ways and that's what the business expects out of that data. They need to be able to look at it in ways that are not technical, in ways yeah. that we don't really think of as technologists right. that are key to driving those. Yeah, those. You know, I, I think we'd be remiss if we don't talk about the one metric that everybody talks about in the mobile world, which is the star rating. Yeah. Right? Yeah, um, you know, I, I cannot, I don't think I know of a channel where the, the quality and the brand of a asset is so visible and so public as, as it is in mobile. I mean, there is this very simple rating system that, the, that iTunes and Google and all these app stores have promoted. And uh, it is today, uh, whether, whether right or wrong, yeah. a, a, a yeah. very, very big leading indicator of how good the mobile app is doing. Yeah, let me just put in a word of caution in regards to that. Right. Because uh, I don't know whether, you know, uh, it was a couple of weeks ago, last week on kind of social media, there was a picture which went out, which showed, uh, I don't know whether it was kind of a fake picture, but it showed um, a person uh, in China with a number of mobile phones in front of them, yeah, rating, yeah. These mobile, <laughs> rating the mobile apps. Yep. And so don't just look at the ratings, kind of my word of caution is, don't just look at the ratings within the mobile app store. Right. Have a look at what people are actually saying on things like Twitter as well. Absolutely. Because these things can be manipulated. Right. But it's, it sounds like the opportunity though is also to you know, be able to use these types of performance management tools to improve the quality such that rather than chasing bugs and fighting fires, you can actually focus, as you were saying, on what people are saying about the application. And then that almost becomes your roadmap for future functionality. And, uh, you know, I was at a meetup the other day and a developer said that, you know, it's almost better when you are solving a problem for a user because they become even more engaged yeah. mm -hmm. when they've seen that you've responded to a request for an enhancement. Absolutely, yeah. I think, and this is where performance management transcends into analytics, right? Uh, uh, you know, performance management is typically looked at as, a, as an IT discipline, uh, but uh, you know, looking at the other forms of influences like social metrics, uh, like reviews and uh, you know slicing and dicing these things, uh, you know, typically falls into the analytics bucket, and uh, that's why you know a company like AppDynamics uh, is 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 also looking at the, the the broader spectrum of not just performance management, but also how analytics can help our customers manage the performance of their applications. Yeah. And I think over time you'll see additional data sources coming into the analytics stream that's going to provide that extra value. 
So bring in my Twitter keywords, my hashtags, the key things there. Bring in my App Store ratings and App Store data and create more of a holistic view of users and the way that they engage. Yeah. And you know, that's a, a future kind of you know, prediction of where things are going with sentiment analysis and, and understanding that type of thing. But it clearly provides a new twist on what application performance calls end user experience yeah. because it, it can go much further than it does today. And I just want to pick up on another point which we said before about um, the IT operations kind of view. Um, so when it comes to mobile apps, when it, well, sorry, when it comes to traditional applications, then there's one metric which kind of rules them all, so to yeah. speak. The metric of MTTR, mean time to resolution. Well, think about that when it comes to a mobile app. You know, you don't want that mobile app to fail in the first place. Mm -hmm. Obviously, when it does fail, you want to kind of uh, implement a fix or find a fix straight away as quickly as possible. But actually, when it comes to a mobile app, it's more about, you know, mean time to business impact or mean time or mean time between, uh, soft, uh, between failures, so MTBF, which is actually an old yeah. software engineering metric, but it becomes mm -hmm. very, very important to kind of mobile because ultimately, and this is where analytics can really help, you are stopping issues from happening in the first place. You're understanding your customers in a bit more detail. You're tailoring that experience and just making sure that performance issues don't occur in the first place. All right, well, we've talked about sort of the state of the art and you know, what people should be doing today to deliver against these five-star mobile application experiences. I'd like each of you to try and put your prognosticator hat on and sort of you know, talk a little bit about the future, how to future-proof the strategy, what are things people need to be thinking about. Maybe you know, there's a lot of talk about wearables, there's a lot of talk about IoT. How does all of that relate to what we've been discussing? Well, you, know, you mentioned two aspects there, so the internet of things and you know, wearables. Um, wearables, you know, today are already kind of already present. Mobile, you know, mobile strategy is not about just mobile apps on smartphones, on tablet devices. It takes into account wearables. It goes back to um, early discussions which we had in regards to you know being customer first. So, you, first and foremost, to embrace any of these new kind of areas, you need to understand your customer. So, whether a wearable strategy makes sense, well. Is that going to kind of enhance customer experience? Is that going to be enhanced from an internal perspective, employee productivity? So, an Internet of Things, well, we all know we're living in a software powered kind of world. And in relation to that, you know, the Internet of Things, that's just another aspect of software, it's another channel. In the same way mobile's a channel, well, having a, a piece of software maybe on a, a thermostat. Um, well, that's another channel which you can harvest data from, where you can take that data and understand your customer in more detail. So all of these new elements to me is about having new areas to harvest data, to understand your customers in better detail. So I've got a couple of kind of even more, I'm not going to call them far-fetched, but things that are going to really start happening and changing you know, the game quite a bit. There's a few things you have to think about. You have to think about sensors and sensor data. So the places where we're going to be able to collect information and actually better understand users, better understand environments, really take the level of engagement to another level will become a reality. And those are going to generate a lot of data. And you're going to need a solid analytics platform that takes that and puts it into the right context. The other thing is that technology is getting a lot more immersive. So the way that we feel about mobile we're going to have a lot of great virtual reality. We're going to have apps that are running on these things that are actually changing our perception of reality, of life, of the way that we interact with technology. And these are all really new and different areas that are going to build new paradigms for apps. And the mobile device is going to become that hub for connectivity. You know, you're going to have a lot of data coming from whatever sensors or devices through the mobile applications and, and mobile ecosystem out to the cloud, basically, where that data is going to be able to be analyzed, collected, and, 
and kind of a broader picture of analytics and, and user experience. Yeah, you know, I'd add to that, right? I mean, I think the, these newer devices, uh, you know, I was recently at a, at a, at a Tesla showroom and uh, they have these connected cars now where you know, cars are driving around, they're giving all these sensor data, they're pushing it all to a server somewhere, uh, but, but there are other interesting complexities to this problem. Sometimes the car is in, uh, is in a coverage area, sometimes it goes out of a coverage area. There are, there are lots of other complexities uh, you know, in the Internet of Things world that I think we barely scratch the surface on. And uh, it's going to create, uh, you know, a whole new set of uh, challenges uh, in terms of monitoring this data, in terms of being able to transfer this data to a central server where you can slice and dice and analyze all of this, all of these, you know, attributes. So, so Internet of Things is, is a brand new world. Uh, I think we're going to be scratching the surface with, you know, Google, Android Wear, and the uh, Apple I, um, you know, iWatch. But, uh, but God, I, I, I'm telling you, this is this is a brand new world, and uh, we'll see, we'll see lots of opportunities here. Great. Well, I want to thank all of you for your time today. I think we talked about some great topics, and look forward to uh, hearing more from you in the future. Thank you much.